<clears throat> Welcome back dear friends. So today we are going to start a new unit and today we'll be dealing with unit number four communication. In this chapter we'll be studying about communication meaning, types of communications, characteristics of communication, then effective communication. Within effective communication we'll be learning about the verbal and non-verbal and in classroom communication, group communication and etc. Also we will be learning about the barriers to the effective communication and then mass media and the society. We will be learning all these things under this unit communication. So let's begin with today's class. The word communication is derived from the Latin word communicate or communicatio and the French word communication. The meaning of all these three words is to share. In short, communication is the interaction between the sender and the receiver. So this is a process which involves thus a set of things. That is like first there is a sender who sends the message who sends the message and that message is mediated through a medium and this is channelized this is received by the receiver and then we get a response by the receiver and then the receiver gives the feedback this is the process of communication. The sender sends a message through a medium or a channel. The receiver receives it and he responds to it and gives the feedback to the sender. So this is a, th this process is a circular in motion because when the sender sends the message and again the receiver gives the feedback again he becomes the sender and he becomes the receiver when again he understands and he gives feedback again he becomes the sender and he becomes the receiver so this process is a cyclic in is cyclic in nature is cyclic in nature and uh, for communication to take place there must be some understanding cooperation between the sender and the receiver. There must be some understanding and cooperation between the sender and the receiver. So uh, we need the common language. Common language must be there between two people because now if somebody is speaking Spanish with me or uh, he is instructing me in Spanish, I can't understand that. I can't communicate with that person because our language is not common but if somebody speaks in English or Hindi or Kannada or even Marathi then we can communicate to each other. So what this is what this means is we need to have that is the sender and the receiver need to have a common language between them. So this is the first necessary thing for the communication to take place. Another thing is need of the common interpretation of the signs. Common Interpretation of the signs. Interpretation of the signs. How how is this how is this important in the uh, communication? Because now uh, the uh, the signs and the symbols like in uh, in English we say cat. Then cat should mean cat. And when one says the word cat then the image of the cat comes to the mind of the receiver. This is the interpretation of the sign. Maybe in some other language, cat means something else. So when the receiver, if, if he hears the word cat and he imagines dog, then there is the misunderstanding or the misinterpretation and there is miscommunication what takes place. Then another common thing is like symbols. This is also same as Signs, signs and symbols and other gestures, gestures which mean that with the hand gestures we do like 
we need water give me water give me some water like we we take our hand to our mouth give me some water but in some other some uh, some other region or some other place the uh, taking your hand to your mouth may mean something else other than water so that that also makes difference in the communication now we'll come to the nature and characteristics of the communication what is the nature of the communication communication is a art is a science and a craft so when it is all these three an art and science and craft when it is all three it becomes a complex process it is a complex process so communication is a complex process then this communication is learnable because whoever can learn this with some efforts it is not it is it is not like that uh, we can't have communication and it is not learnable it's not like that communication is possible and it is learnable with some experts advices and with a uh, with own hard work and dedication towards learning the communication and this this communication is not a static process it's a dynamic process it's a dynamic process dynamic process is it's it keeps on changing so in the earlier days the the language or the communication was a little different now nowadays with the new gadgets and everything now the communication has been changing gradually and our future generation will also have a different type of communication and as i said this is a cyclic process it is a cyclic process or the continuous process for the uh, as i said the message or the message will be sent by the sender and received by the receiver and again this process continues and keeps on cycling in nature also this is a cooperative process it is a cooperative process because there must be cooperation between the sender and the receiver then only communication is possible then this communication is the way to convey the ideas also it is the way where the listener listens to the ideas and he has to interpret those ideas and it is also to the listener and to the speaker to understand each other to understand each other and make a good communication between themselves and this is the and there is a flow of ideas in communication flow of ideas is there and information is there in the communication this is the nature of the communication communication may be oral or written or even some gestures then this communication may be formal or informal so there are many other natures also we'll learn it one by one in in the in the future uh, lessons or in the future uh, sessions wherein we'll be learning about the uh, functions and other things of the communication we'll learn all this one by one and how these are useful also this is the one more uh, nature is that this is the purposive activity purposive activity <clears throat> because whenever communication takes place there is some purpose in that communication so that is purposive activity so i think today so much is enough for the class and in the further classes we will be learning more useful things for us and uh, next sunday all of you are going to write your case at exams so all the best for your case at exams for all the aspirants who are willing to write thank you